Hi everyone, Bernard here with the latest citizen vlog and it's a city pass so it's one of our general looks at a month back in time and this time we're going to look at May 1979 so what were you up to if you were with us in May 1979 probably most of you watching these weren't even weren't a twinkle in your father and mother's eye were you so sadly I was and it's it's quite an interesting more interesting year actually because May 1979 obviously at the three home games and one away game and obviously i attended those games and the away game the home game the last home game of the season was the uh, last game i would have gone to a match as a single man i got married in july 1979 so obviously to now my ex but uh, obviously we've had three wonderful children so the less said about obviously the last few years the better but um <laughs> 19 july 1979 I, I got married so it was an interesting time for watching city and i still i still managed to watch city for a, sort of many years after that as well so it wasn't the end of the world was it getting married anyway <laughs> please if you're new to the channel push the all subscribe button that'd be great push the bell notifications you know on these little citizen vlogs past and present and quizzes a lot of quizzes at the moment are coming out and uh, please thumbs up always appreciated anyway if, you, if, you, if you're far too young to know 1979 it's a bit interesting. They'll learn something. They say, "What's you don't necessarily have to win." It's not always about winning things and winning trophies and big games. I mean, it's just part of our history. Even these four games are quite interesting to look back on. And the and the I'm using programs today rather than scrapbooks, so it's interesting to see what's going on and the players, etc. Anyway, what was happening in in um, the UK in 1979? Well, May May the third, which obviously covers this month that Thatcher led her Conservative Party to an election win. Uh, number one singles were Bright Eyes by Art Garfunkel, Sunday Girl by Blondish, superb albums, The Very Best Of by Leo Sayer, Voulé Vu from ABBA and we also had a bit of snow in May which I do remember of being images of snow in the on the front of I think it was the evening news I remember and obviously other papers of uh, we did have a uh, snow in may which is uh and then we did have a nice summer from from memory so it wasn't too bad after that on the tv we had we had things like two up two down a sitcom with paul nicholas and sue pollard only lasted one season it wasn't very good it's certainly certainly not in my memory anymore uh, we also had a loving memory which is a little bit better with thora heard and christopher beanie and ran for seven years so that ran from 79 to 86 so that did, did far better than uh, mr nicholas's effort uh, highest grossing movies included Kramer vs. Kramer, The Amityville Horror, Rocky 2, Apocalypse Now, Star Trek The Motion Picture, Alien, and 10, of course, with the wonderful, luscious, gorgeous Bo Derrick in. Uh, that was 10 with uh, Dudley Moore. Yep, with Dudley Moore in it as well. Uh, famous people to die. John Wayne died this year. Sid Vicious, Richard Beckinsale, all died 1979. Born, that you may know now, Chris Pratt, Heath Ledger, born and died and sadly passed away as well alia again born in 1979 but sadly again no longer with us and uh kevin hart so how about city what what was city doing well up to up to may it'd been a bit of a bit of a letdown um we did start the season pretty well we were in the top six until early november and then we suddenly plummeted to the bottom third of the table and obviously stayed there for for the last few months of the season, uh, we, we got out of the League Cup in the quarter final away at Southampton, losing 2 1. We got out of the FA Cup in the fourth round against third division Shrewsbury. So, one of our wonderful showings in the FA Cup 2 0 at third division Shrewsbury. Do you remember that? Were you there? We were you there at Shrewsbury. I, I must admit, I wasn't at that one. Um, and in the UEFA Cup, we had a great run in the UEFA Cup, didn't we? We had a fantastic run. We beat 20 and Skinner, we beat Standard Liège, we beat AC Milan. And then, unfortunately, we went out, I think it was 4-2 on aggregate uh, to Borussia Mönchengladbach. So, I think the round before the quarterfinals. It was quite hard cup to win the UEFA Cup in those days. All the, apart from the champions, they obviously went into the European Cup. Obviously, the second, third and second and third teams, all, all the best teams went into the UEFA Cup. So, it's quite a hard... Uh, cup to win but we did really well I, I thought we had a chance that season I must admit but uh, it wasn't to be uh, 
A defeat on the 28th of April 79 for the third time to Southampton because obviously they'd, we'd played them in the cup as well. So they beat us three times that year. Uh, a defeat 1 0 left us 16th. But we were safe from relegation because obviously we'd had enough points. So even though we were in 16th with four games left, um, we still had a bit of pride to play for, didn't we? So that brought us into May 1979. And the first game we're going to look at is a game which is shows on the thumbnail there. Uh, Birmingham City at home. Uh, Birmingham was struggling. They were 21st in the in the division, uh, obviously to six, City's 16th. Uh, we beat Birmingham 2-1 at St Andrews earlier in the season. Some great images from the programme. Obviously on the cover there, if you know, sisters, you know that. Uh, the, it's not Leo Sayer, that's... <laughs> it was number one, wasn't it? And that's uh, Barry Silton, obviously also known as Leo Sayer. And obviously... Gary Owen, who I've, I've spoke to and spent time with Gary Owen in a charity match uh, once at Main Road, a really nice guy. Uh, then we've got little things inside. We've got interesting things from a, a game against Everton where, notice who was playing for Everton there? Brian Kidd had come back to play for Everton. Obviously Dave Watson, the wonderful Dave Watson there, the old kip -outs. little rail. See the, see the fence at the front there, the little railings. And uh, then you've got Roger Palmer in action there. Remember Roger Palmer, a local lad, obviously, Wilbram High School, was he? Manchester boys, Roger Palmer. And then we had some colour images. The guy who scored a lot of goals for City at the time, uh, Kaz Dane, again, rest in peace. We've got to say this a lot over these 1970s uh, look backs, aren't we? Um, obviously, unfortunately, other things as well, but. Uh, the wonderful Kazu Dana in action there. Sony Buck, of course, was the uh, manager for City at the time. And he was talking about a, a bit of discontent, actually. I mean, there's a few players were hinted that they could move. Uh, Asa Hartford, Peter Barnes, Dave Watson, Gary Owen, all, all potentially going to move. So things, things weren't exactly positive. We're going through 1979, don't forget. So we're going through a little bit of a, a, little bit of a change. And, of, of course, we had... Um, the first FA Youth Cup final appearance in 1979. So, um, obviously, FA Youth Cup final has been settled. The Boy Blues will play host to Millwall. So, we were to play Millwall in the first leg at Main Road on Wednesday, May the 16th, 7.30, with a second leg at Millwall on May the 21st. So, that was a, an achievement in there to get into them. We're going to have a look at the youth team players in a, in a moment. So, that will be the first one of that. Season ticket prices for, for 79.80. Um, you could get the Kipak Street adult, you could go for £13 for the season, obviously prior to May the 5th discount, I mean this is obviously May the 1st, so I haven't got much time have you, uh, £12, so obviously prior to that, uh, Platte Lane adult was £21, uh, and £19 if you paid prior to the 5th of May, so match day prices, look at them, Platte Lane £1.30 for an adult, 90p for a child. Uh, the Kipak Street, £1 for an adult, 70p for a junior. And the, the poshest seats were in the main stand, blocks B and C, the guys who never stood up and always wins all the time. I mean, they, they would set you back 50 quid for a season ticket, £45 if you bought it but before the 5th of May. And the match day prices, £3 to get into this. So the posh seats, the posh seats there. And obviously, there's a, an image of the, the league as it stood then. Let's see how City are, and um, obviously Birmingham struggling there. I mean, um, say City had enough points not to be panicking. They had a good 16 points ahead of second from bottom, so they, they were quite comfortable. A great picture of Malcolm Allison. Blues off duty, obviously used to have players and the managers, and uh, Malcolm Allison there at his home. And it's Marple he used to live, Malcolm Allison. That's a great image of, um, of Malcolm Allison. Uh, City chief coach's wife, Sally Ann. Marple Cheshire, yeah, in Marple Cheshire. And then we've got the Youth Cup heroes, haven't we? And this is um, going through the Youth Cup. This is this was the Youth Cup lineup: Alex Williams, Gary Fitzgerald, Richard Cunningham, Nicky Reed, Tommy Caton, Ross McGinn, Mel McClure, Steve Kinsey, Chris Wilson, Kevin Glendon, Phil Wright, Mark Lee, Chris Gregory, Gregory. And Gary Buckley, and there's an image of all the guys as well. These city youth look big lads, don't they? they? Look like big lads, but uh, Gary Buckley's missing from that because he actually broke his leg. But uh, 
with Tommy Kate and then Alex Alex Williams, Steve Kinsey. So good team, good team. We will have a quick chat on the Youth Cup final um, a little just when we finish this as well. I'm travelling to Forest. Forest was going to be an away game in a couple of games. It was two pounds seventy five on the coach and three pound fifty on the train to go to Nottingham Forest. And your lineups. I mean, if you look at the lineups there, I mean, for Birmingham, anyone outstanding? No real big names on the Birmingham one that I can remember particularly. I mean, obviously, if you, if you look at the uh, the City team there, there's no ch no changes to the lineup. It was as as per that program there with the uh, Colin Bill Jonas sub. So Colin Jill, Bill Jonas the City sub. So that's the lineup as it stood. Now do we do well? A crowd of twenty seven thousand three hundred sixty six. This wasn't a bad crowd, but a bit down on average. Uh, saw City with a three one win again. Mister Kazu Dana, as we commented before, scored two of the goals and Power got the other one. And the man of the match uh, for City was uh, Dave Watson that day. So it took City up a couple of places. It took us from sixteenth into fourteenth and led us to the fifth of May nineteen seventy nine and another. Another home game to look forward to. I mean, there's three out of four in May. It must have been a busy May. I hope we had plenty of money. I don't think the crowds were fantastic because uh, all these games coming together. Uh, Bristol City Bristol City were 11th at the time, obviously above us in the league. Um, we drew one all at Ashton Gate earlier in the season. And there's some good news inside. I mean, apparently Mike Shannon was on the transfer list, but uh, the old... Win, the old uh, Wimble arms when he scored, but uh, he's been taken off the transfer list there. And obviously, it's uh, how long that would last. Do we hear? Who knows? Uh, and bingo agent. I was a bingo agent at the time. I was uh, an agent, and then I went one of these where I went and picked up all the agents' money. You know, one of these guys who went and collected the money off the agents, etc. So I did that for a while. But ten percent expenses on all sales, priority for big match tickets, so you can get your big you know, derby ticket, you can get your big tickets. You won't be worried about it. Bonus prizes on winning tickets are twenty five and over. Complimentary match ticket scheme, as I said, agents bulletins and special agents only competitions. I mean, it was well worth it, even if you just bought them yourself. You know, even even if you just sold them to a couple of your family and bought them yourself, it was really good stuff because you you guarantee yourself tickets for big games. It was really good. Um, and it was interesting the season in this one, obviously, the season tickets. Uh, last season they, they sold in 77 78, they sold 25,000. Sorry, 78 79, they sold 25,000 tickets, and they'd already hit 13,000. And by the end, by the start of the 79 80 season, they expect to at least match that. So that's quite impressive. Uh, season ticket figures and the Blues off duty featured Nicky Reed there uh, in the middle. Of the four, obviously, brothers and his mum and dad there. Nicky Reed, what a great player, Nicky Reed. Some great images in the centre. Obviously, a safe pair of hands in Joe Curry. Get a little bit close to those ladies there, enjoying himself. But again, Gary Owen there with the uh, Elton John, a very young Elton John. And there uh, we've got the wonderful Bert Trout, who I think is that's the support of one of the supporters association guys, but the great Bert Trout and a great picture there of the. Uh, of that gent Frank Swift. I've seen Bert Chapman. Frank Swift, my apologies. A great picture there of Frank Swift. So yeah. Goalkeeper. Obviously you had your last day of discount. So you still had a day left because this was the fifth of May. And you had to reply by the fifth of May. So you didn't have much too much time to get on the phone, did you, once the once the game had finished? So that was uh, <laughs> I was quite interested. Um the lineups, the lineups for the game. Uh, Bristol City included um, Jerry Gow. There you go. That obviously will be uh, featuring heavily for City. Had Norman Hunter at the end of his thing. And sadly, I've just um, as I'm recording this, I've just it's just been that he's actually got this uh, the COVID virus, um, Norman Hunter. But uh, so we wish him well. So that's as I'm. I'm not sure when this is going out. Obviously, you may you may know more than me now. But as a, as it now. My, our best wishes go to him and his family anyway. Uh, and Joe Royal was also playing for Bristol City. So you look at the teams there, and as far as the uh, City team was concerned, again, it was as per the programme. So we, we mustn't have got injuries in those days. And Colin Bilge on again was a sub. 
Crowd again, a little bit down on, on the average, 29,739, a little bit better than the last game against Birmingham. Uh, another 2 0 win. Yes, and Mr. Dana scored again. Kaju Dana scored one goal and Asa Hartford added the other. And Joe Corrigan was man of the match. So even though we won it 2 0, obviously um, we had a bit of defensive play to do. Uh, so it still left us 14th. We didn't move anywhere. We didn't get any worse. We didn't get any better. We still left 14th in the league. And then that took us to our last away game of the season. And a, a celebratory mood was. was being had at the city ground for Nottingham Forest because they just qualified for the European Cup final. Um, there's obviously an image of him going to the second leg in Cologne, Peter Taylor, the players there, Brian Clough. You can see Brian Clough image, and they did really well to turn around a, 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 an average display at the city ground. And they actually went, went to Cologne and actually won through that to the final to play Malmo and obviously we we know how that ended obviously but that's a great, great image of him getting going walking out to the plane even though people had wrote them off when obviously yeah Cologne had, had actually done well at the city ground um we actually drew nil nil at main road um earlier in the season and also as well as reaching the final of the European Cup they were actually the winners they are the trophy on the front there Yeah, it belongs to us now, doesn't it? That, but the league cup holders are the three-two win by Southampton. I mean, that's uh, it's pretty much our trophy these days. But uh, no, that's a, a great image, obviously showing the game there against Southampton, a three-two, a three-two win. So they would go on to win the European Cup and the hold. So a European and uh, domestic double. I wonder who, who was the first English team to do that in the past. Well, I think we know. All right, it wasn't the European Cup, but it was a cup winners' cup, which was the second second best cup anyway. So. The teams, I mean, you think Forrest, Shilton, Anderson, Clark, McGovern, Lloyd, Burns, Francis, Bowyer, Bertles, Woodcock, Robertson, a great, great team. And we do have a little change in the City one, in the City lineup there anyway. We actually have them. Um, it's actually crossed out there as well. So you've actually got uh, Owen instead of uh, Power. So Owen for Power in that team. So whoever's took us, this isn't my program actually. This is some obviously I didn't have a program at the time to this. Is I got this later on, so someone's actually altered it there, which people do. I, I would never do that on my own. I, I don't like um, altering things and messing around with programs. But I like them as they are. Uh, how did it go? Well, the attendance twenty one thousand one hundred and four, and a defeat for City. Unfortunately, a three one win to Forest, who say were a cracking team at the time uh, and we didn't even score the goal it was a Larry Lloyd own goal obviously for City uh, left us 14th and obviously uh, man of the match yep yeah, again Joel Corrigan was man of the match as uh, quite a hefty defensive display, uh, display there and it took us to the last game of the season so a bit of a damn script season it's now so we started this in 14th and it was a game against, well, Aston Villa, another one that would have European Cup pedigree, obviously. So another another good game. They were lying eighth. We drew one all at Villa Park earlier in the season. Some great images on the front there of uh, Cashew Dane. Looks like it was, that's against Bristol City, I think. So uh, and there we get the thing. We've got the Young Player of the Year to Nicky Reed. And then we got the City Player of the Year to Asa Hartford for that season. So that's a great trophy. So massive, that trophy. Really impressive. And you got Ken Barnes going behind City Scenes there. The Ken Barnes, if you remember him. Got Kenny Clements there as well. That Moonraker lottery ticket, giving obviously Kenny Clements that great moustache. He had a great moustache, Kenny Clements, didn't he? And off to you too, we've got the wonderful Colin Bell with his family. King Colin. And if you just look at the crowd, with it was just one game left. You look at the crowds for the season, and City are averaging just under thirty-seven thousand. That compared with over nearly forty-two thousand uh, the season before. So they had we had dropped a little bit, but we hadn't had the greatest of seasons. But it was still, it was still one of the best crowds. It was still up there with the uh, with. Although it was only fourth behind Liverpool, Everton, and United, so we were the fourth best supported team uh, in 1979 behind Liverpool, Everton, and United. Um, we've got obviously Aston Villa and the manager, obviously Mr. Ron Saunders. Obviously, he'd gone to Villa. He left. He left just before they won the European Cup, so he left us, went to Villa, 
won a title with them, but obviously didn't didn't stick around for the European Cup, even though he started the season that Villa won the European Cup, obviously. So Ron Saunders was in charge. Uh, the City lineup, uh, you've got Ranson for Reed and Bill Jones for Power and Roger, Roger Palmer as a sub. Yeah, look at the Villa team. So we've got there Andy, Jimmy Rimmer, John Gidman. Again, we'll come to City. Colin Gibson, John Gregory, Ken McNaught, Dennis Morton, Gary Shelton, Alan Evans, John Dean, Alex Cropley and Ken Swain. So, yeah, I mean, let's like say they would would go on to win the European Cup uh, within within a year or two, wouldn't they? So that was that was a good, strong Aston Villa team. Uh, a crowd of 30,000 for the last game at uh, main road for the season, 30,028. Unfortunately, we lost 3-2 uh, despite, yes, two goals from, you guessed it, Cashew Dana. So there you go. Cashew Dana, I think it was how many goals up to them? Was it five goals in four games? That's, that's not bad going, is it? For uh, What a player. I mean, may he rest in peace, but a super. Died far too young, obviously. Yeah, Cashew Dana. But that left us finishing for the season. Uh, one of our worst finishes for a while, actually. 15th place, which was the worst for quite a while in the uh, first division at the time. And I did mention the FA Youth Cup final, didn't it, early on? And obviously... The May the 16th game uh, at home, uh, a crowd, not a massive crowd, 2,952. We actually drew nil-nil with Millwall at, uh, at home. I think it was probably would have been at Main Road, obviously. And then the the second leg, the 21st of May, a crowd of 5,653, sort of mil, Millwall beat City 2-0. So, so we lost the Youth Cup 2-0 on aggregate. And of course... This is 1979, we 78-79, we'll have to wait till the 1985-86 season before a Paul Lake-inspired City would event get its first win of the FA Youth Cup final. Anyway, so that's May 1979, I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you brought that some memories or told you a few things, as I say, one, one thing that sticks in my mind there is Kazu Dana, what a, what, you know, what a, I mean, it, I, I forget how many goals he did score for City in the time he played, and obviously it wasn't long enough. But uh, great player, and he was even in the, he was even in a film, wasn't he? He was even with Mike Summerby and uh, Bobby Moore. Was it Bobby Moore in it? And uh, Sylvester Stallone escaped to victory, of course. I mean, Kazu Dana appeared in that. So if you like that film and you didn't realise, you, you must have. If you're a City fan, you probably did. But uh, he was he, he was even a film star as well as a goal scorer. Rest in peace. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Please, for everything about City, follow me on Twitter at Charles Deneen, Deneen spelled D I W N W E N. Or you can also follow me on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore Movie, which is, is mainly for my films, but obviously City related as well. And both both those accounts are linked to each other. So follow, you can follow both or one or the other. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. All the same things sort of appear on them. And I'm on Facebook at Burn Deneen with links to moviegamenostalgia.com, my little website for old rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s, and older, the older board games, older retro board games from the 60s, 70s, 80s, etc. Rather than rather than the modern board games, which I find far too complicated. It's like being at school playing some of the modern board games. I just want to have a bit of fun, you know. I don't want it to be too complicated. Anyway, if you can get on there, fantastic, please. And as I said, thumbs up is always appreciated. And join me again. Obviously, there won't be a June. There's no, no football really in June, is there? So the, the next one I'll be doing, obviously, there won't be a July. So I'll be, there'll be plenty of stuff going out on the Citizen Vlogs past. I mean, um, maybe a player or two looks at or something a special game looks at over the next couple of months uh, and then obviously i'll be back with a with an august a pre-season in august of another season we start another year obviously we started um what did we start with us trying to think what we started with back in uh, what we've done so far got a little sheets of paper here with the information on Yeah, so we go back to, um, we did August 1997, September 1989, October 1995, November 1974, December 1993, January 1977, February 1982, March 1992, April 2002, and we just finished off with May 1979. So we've done a full season of uh, monthly reviews, and we've got plenty to go out, haven't we, so... I'll be back, obviously, sometime in July <laughs> with uh, 
an August year to be decided yet. But no, whatever happens, we know in City's history, it's going to be an interesting season one way or the other. So uh, please join me for that. And obviously join me for all the all the links are below for all the other blogs, etc. in the meantime. So please enjoy those. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm going to do the rest of Have a great one. Look after yourself, look after your friends, look after your family, and especially look after each other. And this is Bernard saying goodbye for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.